All right, top eight, the eighth, eight most popular question. What are the heavenly books mentioned in the Bible? So, and maybe uh, you can pull a verse up on this too to give uh, some context to where this is talked about. It's probably talking about the book of Revelation, for example. Uh, Revelation 20. And, or actually, well, it talks about books. For example, in Revelation, it talks about how everybody is judged by the book of life. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 15, it says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into lake of fire. So God is maintaining a book, a record, and, um, and in fact, if you look at Revelation 20, verse 12, it, does, it says there's more than just a book. It says, um, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God in the book's books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So, there's the book of life that's in heaven, and then we also have other books, and these would be a book that would correspond with every single person. So just think of, think of like for us with uh, Facebook, you know, maybe you're just blogging your day, you're talking about every little activity you're doing, what's happening, you have a record now of your life. That's sort of the same thing that's going on in heaven right now for all of us. So God's keeping account of the good and the bad we're doing, so that at the end, it could be clear to everybody why someone would be saved, or why someone would be cast into the lake of fire with the wicked. Yes, and there's also the Book of Remembrance. If we go to Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, um, the Book of Life is, is one of the books. Uh, there's also the Book of Remembrance, which seems to suggest um, a different um, record of like just having the names of those who are in the Book of Life. This book is a record of the good deeds of those who fear the Lord. Um, so in Malachi 3, verses 16 through 18, we, we read, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. And so by specifically saying, yes, there's the book of life, where those who um, uh, will get to go to heaven, their names are written there. God also wants us to know that every good deed that we do is not forgotten and um, it doesn't go unnoticed by him. And I think it's special that heaven treasures uh, these deeds and these good things that we do in a book called Remembrance. Exactly. And just to be clear that these books are in heaven, if you look at Daniel 7, uh, verses, uh, starting at verse 9, so Daniel 7 verse 9, it starts describing the scene of heaven and talks about how thrones are placed down, the Ancient of Days sits. If uh, I'm a lawyer and you know when a judge enters the room and then he sits down, now court is in session. And uh, on verse 10 it says, a fiery stream came from the forth from him, thousands Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, you know, describing all these angels all around him, and tens of thousands stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. So, so this is, these things we're describing are in heaven that we're talking about. These aren't, you know, some book here on earth. Yeah, and I think the next book that's specifically named among the books that we know exist um, is, is a book that holds a record of the sins of men. 
And the psalmist says that in Psalms uh, 130, verse 3, um, that God marks our iniquities in his book. And obviously, the these iniquities uh, get erased when we you know, ask for forgiveness. And, uh, and God says, I will remove your sins and remember them no more. But in Psalms 133, it says, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? So he's marking our iniquities just like he marks our own good deeds. Um, and, and the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, that there will be a judgment and we will be judged for our good deeds or our bad deeds. Um, not that there's a weight or scale, but it says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. And there is a record of all our good and all of our bad. <clears throat> and the importance of this record, which a lot of people sometimes overlook is that when we go to heaven we might see people there that we didn't expect to see or we might miss people who we thought would be there and are not and the bible says that we will have a thousand years to look at the books and do the judgment um and and see for ourselves answers that we may be wondering like i'm sure paul um you know, the last thing uh, right before Paul became Paul he was Saul and he was persecuting the church. And Stephen, the first saint to be persecuted, saw all of the Pharisees handing their coats over to this young man named Saul. And, you know, he they're stoning him to death. And so that's Stephen's last memory of Saul. And then later on, we find out Saul gets converted and becomes Paul and is the greatest minister to the Gentiles. And when he goes to heaven, Stephen's going to be like, uh, Paul, Saul is here, like what's going on? And then the angels will probably take him to the records and, and show him the books where all of this is and all our answers will be, um, all our questions that we have will be answered in heaven. And um, I'm working on a blog right now to Talk about what really happens during the thousand years, uh, the millennium, as a lot of people have questions about usually. Oh, that's awesome, because we were just talking about that last week. Super. Very timely. And I want to just talk about a little bit about these books. While we're talking about these books, and you're now feeling maybe a little bit paranoid that God's just watching everything, recording everything, and any mistake now is forever going to be recorded, that doesn't have to be the case. So, for example, Isaiah 43, verse 25. God says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out... Uh, oh, Natalie, can you mute? Okay. Uh, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. So, who is this he's talking to? I mean, this is not everybody, but the righteous who let their sins be covered by the blood of Christ can have their sins blotted out, and God will not remember them. Uh, Isaiah 44, 22, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. So, so that's the beauty of, of God's plan. He's made a way for all the bad things you've ever done to be wiped out and you could start in a sense with a clean slate and that's what's uh what's even really cool about the new testament where you can die to self and you'd be born even as like a new person and all these old things now can pass away and you can live in newness with christ amen that's very hopeful and god is so good and it's, it's really interesting that people have, what is that, the seventh most asked question so far? Yeah, or at least seven most, most viewed. That may have been inferred from 